Right guys, Sunday night, just loaded the van, tools, materials once again. Um, this is in preparation for fencing vlog number four. Uh, this is a six foot high single slatted fence. It'll be 12 metres long and it's we're doing it in Marykirk, which is in northeast Scotland. I'll show you some of the tools I use, some of the methods I use, rightly or wrongly. This is how I build a fence. Um, if you gain anything from it whatsoever, uh, that's the whole purpose of doing the videos. So we'll see you tomorrow. Right guys, welcome to beautiful Mary Kirk. Uh, this is Monday morning and this is the job here. We're basically putting a six foot slatted fence all along here. So the first job for me is to establish the two end points. So we'll get two posts. Post in at this end, post in at that end. And then we'll string a line between the two and then that'll let us get the other posts in. So just establishing the, the boundary Right folks, that's the first hole dug. Um, you'll notice here, I'm just... If you see those red marks on the post hole diggers, I mark them at 600 on the diggers. Um, so that actually gives you a visual aid when you get down to sort of two feet deep. Take them out. So from this point here to that point here is two feet. And that's pretty much a standard, you know, for a slatted fence, that's the standard depth of post you would use so two feet deep get the post in and then two bags of post creep um, we'll fix that in and then we'll fix this fence to this new post that'll give us our first point and we can get the other one down there and then we can string a line between the two right i'll just show you this quickly and um, before i install any post i'll always choose the straight side as the face side so I'm just turning this post. So if you can see, if you can see down the length of that post there, see how there's a bend in it. It's slightly curved. So I would not, I would not use the left side or the right side for the face. If you can see down this side here. If you can see down this side here. It's really straight. So I would always use that as the face of the fence. So the face of this post will be pointing outwards. By doing that, if you use all the straight edges facing outwards, you get a much straighter fence. As opposed to a couple that are curved, you know, out the way or in the way, and then the fence will be sort of all over the place. So that's what I do anyway. Right, guys, that's two bags of concrete in there, and you'll see what I do is slope it up the post. Um, and trying, I always try and keep the concrete slightly above the ground, it's just so the water hits the concrete and runs away uh, from the ground. If you have this concrete buried you know four or five inches with soil and that's what tends to rot the post so it just helps that and you also see this residue and what i always do is carry a sprayer with me once i put the last bit of post in just spray spray that residue off So that serves two purposes, it washes the residue off. If you left that to dry, um, you know, it would be there for, for life basically. You know, so you better wash it off while you're doing it. Also, you're adding some moisture to the post, runs down into the cement without disturbing the cement. Um, excuse the French teacher, PE teacher behind me. Um, right guys, I'm just going to string the line. This is the string that I use. Um, I found out to be the best and it is Marshalltown. Um, it's actually a braid um, and what I do, I've, I've permanently got a screw tied on the end and what I'll do is one end, I'll just use the impact driver, screw that right in put a screw in at the other end, wrap that around and tighten up I'll show you how to do that and um, it's just quick and efficient, there's no, no need for knots or anything like that so I'll show you how we do that now Okay, so we've got the screw that's attached to the end of the string I'm just screwing that into the base of this post Now we'll string that all the way up to that other end, other post at the end. Okay, so what I've done now, I've put a screw three quarters of the way in on this other post. Now what I do is get the string, hook it around once and pull it as tight as you can. Right, 
hook it around again and then I'll screw that screw tight into the post. That, that holds the line in place. You can see that all the way along there now. And because this is braid, it doesn't stretch. So it's like, it's, it's basically as tight as anything, you know, so. That's what I always use. I'll, I'll leave a link in the description to this. It's fairly expensive, but it's honestly, it's really worth. It's the best string line in my opinion. Okay, so we've got the string line uh, strum as I showed you earlier. Now we're just laying out the rails. Now the rails are 3.6 meters long. Um, so normally I would put uh, posts at 1.8 centers. But in this case, it's not gonna work out. We've pretty much got three full rails and then we'll have this little bit here. Now you could just put a post in and use longer rails to attach, but I don't like doing that. I would I would rather have you know an additional post. But basically because we need six posts now uh, to string all these rails against, um, we just basically do a calculation and work it out equally so the posts are equally spaced. Now in this job obviously every job's different um, but the customer's actually going to be building a concrete base in here and um, well his father is so his father's asked if we can just attach these uh, rails in the fence sort of temporarily so I'm going to make this a full 3.6 meter length and um, just screw it all together so it can easily be taken off when they're, when they're doing this base so what we're going to have here is 3.6 post there post there then I'm going to divide this equally so there might be, the posts will be slightly closer together in this area here, but I'm just working to, you know, what they're wanting. Uh, so I'll do that now. So basically I'm just going to mark all the posts um, in the right areas and then we'll, we'll dig all the holes. Right, so I've done my calculations. This one will remain at 3.6 for this base as I explained earlier. And then from this distance here to the corner post up there, um, I've allowed five eco. Uh, spaces and it works out at 61 inches. So basically, 61 inches. What I'll do now is just spray a white line for every 61 inches. Not tell me about it. So there, we'll spray the rest along the line every 61 inches. Okay, so we marked all the areas now. What that will allow us to do is use full. Or basically full rails and we can um by splitting the distance and keeping it under 3.6 meters we can stagger the joints for the rails but i forgot to mention um, when i string a line i always string it roughly a foot off the ground and um, so it's running quite low to the ground as you'll see it the reason i do that is so it's not kind of in your way when you're digging um, and when you are digging i'll show you here because we're using a braid and put it so tight before I dig the hole, all I do is just put my foot on the line, stand back, dig the hole, and then just let my foot off. You see the line spring back. You see how tight it is. So again, I'll stand on that when I'm digging the hole, and then you know just just let go. You see it, and that's still a perfect straight line all the way down. And you see some guys stringing lines, you know, halfway up the post or quite high up the post. Um, I do do that sometimes to get the, the levels of the posts uh, correct, but when I'm lining up posts, you know, to cement them in, always have it low down like that. Right guys, that's all the posts sort of dug, all the holes are dug. So now I'm just going to begin concreting in all the posts. So each post I'll get two bags of concrete, which equates to 40 kilograms per post. Um, so we'll get all them cemented in. I've actually had to raise the ground a little bit here and I'm going to dig the ground out a little bit there just to try and get it, you know, a more sort of level plane. Plane, there was a big dip here before, you know, I don't really want the fence coming along and then dipping down um, just because this backs onto a park so I'd rather have it neater, just sort of straight along if I can. So I'll get all these cemented in now. Right folks, that's all the posts in. So we've got them all running pretty much perfectly in line. I don't know. I don't know how the camera shows it, but they are pretty good. So 
So that's due to, uh, remember, using the straight face and the face of the posts running along with the string line. And they should all be pretty much straight. So that's a good basis to put all the rails on. So we'll get all the rails on now. Bottom, middle and the top. And we'll take it up there. Right guys, just been fitting the rails just now. And I'm just putting the last one in position. And cut it to length. And every cut you do on pressure treated timber, you give it a coat of clear preserver. So in all the cut ends, um, coat it with clear preserver. Okay, so the screws I use for fixing the rails to the fences are, in this case, 6.7 by 100 um, external rated coach screws. So for every joint, I'll give it two screws. Um, I'll never use 90 millimeter nails for fixing the rails to the fences. I've just seen uh, so many occasions where the, the nails just pop out um, where I've been to repair fences. Usually on new build properties or whatever. Um, on a year down the line, you know, sometimes the rails can just pop right out. But by using these, um, you get such a good fixing, it'll never, never budge. Okay, so just show you fitting one of these. The great thing about using these screws is I'm a little bit OCD, so, you know, so I normally put the rails in temporarily. Uh, stand back or I'll look along them, have a look, and if there's any up or down that need moved, I'll just simply remove the screw, move the rail to where it needs to be and then put the screw back in. Obviously if you nail this with 90 millimeter nails, it's a right pain if you need to move anything. As I say, I've got a bit of a OCT nature, so I like everything to be sort of even and straight where, where possible, so these screws are great. I'll just show, I'll actually show you just how to get the screw back out, so that's totally tight in and then that's the screw backed out as easily as that. So that's the rails pretty much done. The only other thing to show you with the rails is um, what I was talking about, about post spacings uh, earlier in the video. And that is so, so you can get full rails uh, between the spaces. And what you don't want is this distance here to that distance there, say, to be over 3.6 metres. Or you've all not got a full rail to meet to meet that post. So in that instance, you would have to, you know, put a join there and then put another bit of wood in and a join there. That creates a weak point. So what you always want to do is stagger your joints and have full rails going from post to post. So you'll see in this one, there's a joint there, a joint there, but there's no joint in the center there. And you do that all the way along the fence. You see that one there, there's a joint in the middle, but the top and the bottom joints are going right through. That one, see the joints at the top and the bottom, but the middle ones are going right through and so on. So that's all I really has to say about rails. Right, another topic here, which might be controversial, but I could leave these posts all just sitting the way they are with a flat top and, and the treated end sitting up. But a lot of times I, I prefer to actually cut the posts at a 30 degree angle, just to encourage water runoff. Um, I've done this, I'll, I'll take another video, but I've done this in a fence I've done about 15 years ago at a rental property of mine. And I've just left the cut end, I'll show you. So just a normal treated end like that. And right in the centre of the post, it's just started to kind of rot right through. Um, I've also done a lot of fences where they cut these at an angle, sanded them down to close the grain and then treated the top with either clear preserver or paint. Um, never had an issue with any of those. So that, that's the way I prefer to do it, is just cut an angle. Okay, with the post, you'll see I put a little packer on the outside and then that's just a guide to run my chainsaw along when I'm cutting the posts. You'll see that angle. So there's the top of the post. And what I'll do now is sand that to just close the grain. It just closes the grain of the wood. And then give it a really good treatment on the top. Um, and what this does is, you know, when it rains, the water just runs off instead of sits in the really porous. Um, I've left a post there. See how porous that is, it's just a treated end. 
the water just sits in those and tends to rot. Um, I just personally think this is a better way. But everybody's different. You know, a lot of people would never do that. They would just leave the treated end poking up. But I'm not convinced. So it's them cut. You can see the top of the posts. So just sort of cut them all the way along. Every one of them's got an angle on them. So I'll just go and treat all them. I'll just go and treat all them now. Right, so we're just about to start nailing the slats on here. And the only really important thing here to say is the type of nails that you've got to use. Um, I always use hot dipped galvanised nails. Um, I mean, they're double the price of, you know, your standard galvanised nails. But being hot dipped, they're the most corrosion resistant nails you get. Apart from stainless, obviously, but they are just the price is too prohibitive. They're also ring shank nails, so what that means is they've got rings on them. So when they go in, they take a really good grip and will not come out. Um, you just use the, the nail gun. I use the Pazload 360 XI. Uh, along with these nails, six nails in each slat. And this one, there's a 20 millimeter gap between slats, which I've got a metal spacer there that I use and just work that all the way down to the end of the fence. Yeah, so the, with the slats, um, I've set the height. Um, because these rails are all you know, pretty much uh, level all the way down, that height will remain consistent along the bottom of the fence and the top of the fence. Um, I'll use a string line from the top of that along just to keep the, the line right. And then, simple case, I'm nailing them all on. So you'll see I've strung the line from the the first picket there and that I've taken it halfway along the fence I've marked the height of this one so this height of slat here corresponds with the same as the end and the top of this slat will be uh, level with the, the top of this it's like a little seating area that's why I sort of strive to keep this the rails sort of level you know, building up the ground, digging out the ground here, just trying to get the fence running, you know, perfectly with that. So there's a line running down there. And now basically we just follow that line and put all the slats on, down to the halfway point, transfer this down to the other end, string the line and then do the same again. Right, just a wee finishing touch. Um, whenever, whenever I do a fence it's facing onto a public area, which this is, it's a public park, so you get a lot of people walking past. Um, I always put a badge on the fence, um, just, you know, basic contact details. So I'll just screw that in just now. So it's basically just a plaque. Um, you know what it's like, if people see a new fence up, they're normally having a wee nosy, so it's good to put your name to a fence. You can actually see your work for real as opposed to just on photos on, you know, Google or Facebook. Um, surprising how many jobs I've had, um, especially here in Marykirk, you know, I must have had about eight or nine jobs, just off the back of one that I'd done on the main public highway. So definitely worth doing. Right, so here's the finished fence. Hopefully in this video I've shown you quite a lot of the steps. Um, I've taken just to build this. This is probably our most basic type of fence that you get. It's just a standard slatted fence. Um, but that's, that's basically all the custom I wanted here. They just had a three foot fence here before. Um, and it just This is just a lot more secure. So they just wanted a standard six foot fence. You know, just to stop anybody, you know, easy access to their garden. That's it guys, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, please give it a like if you can, that would be great. If you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. Um, but I'll try and do a lot more fencing type videos uh, when I get a chance. It's just awkward to film sometimes when you're working, but hopefully I got quite a lot of filming done in this one. Right guys, thank you, all the best.